Welcome to ITTV for Form 5 Physics. The title of this lesson, Types of Wave. In this lesson, we want to have a look at different types of wave. In the last lesson, we had a look at the wave. We understood that a wave was created by a vibration and we got a repeating motion. Also, that waves transfer energy from one place to another without transferring any medium. Propagation of waves. Waves are carrier of energy. But waves only transfer energy, but it does not transfer matter. So this is what we learned in the last lesson. In this lesson, we want to learn about the types of waves, of which there are two. One, which is going to cause the particles to move parallel to the direction of the wave and another where the particles are going to move perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Types of wave. Examples. A radio wave carries energy from the radio transmitter to the radio receiver. A sound wave carries energy from the radio to the ear. Ocean waves carry the energy of the wind onto a beach. Cool. Types of wave. Longitudinal wave. Transverse wave. So these are our two types of wave that I mentioned earlier. One where it's going to make particles move parallel and one where the particles are going to move perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now you're going to hear this word propagation quite often. Please understand that propagation means the movement of the wave or the direction that the wave is moving. How to produce wave? Vibration system produces wave. What is a longitudinal wave? Direction of vibration parallel to the direction of wave propagation. So in the longitudinal wave, the wave is going to move in a parallel direction to the vibration. Demonstration. Now, if you watch the slinky, you will notice that the hand is moving back and forth, a push or a pull. And you can see that we are creating areas of compression where the slinky springs are closer to each other or an area of rarefaction where the slinky spring is a bit further from each other. You will notice how the areas of compression seem to move through the spring. The motion is parallel to the direction of propagation. Example of longitudinal wave, sound wave, which needs a medium for propagation. So our main example of a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. Basically air that is in front is being pushed and pulled by the sound wave is moving back and forth, creating what we call areas of rarefaction and areas of compression. Let's sketch this longitudinal wave on the board so we get a clearer idea. So with a sound wave, our vibration is going back and forth. So this is the vibrating source. What happens to the air here is the air in this area is pushed forward a bit and it compresses and then it extends a bit where you get an area that is slightly larger, then you get an area of compression and then once again a larger empty area. Not empty but with less air particles in that area. And then once again you get an area of compression. Now these are your compression. And these areas are your rare faction. A wavelength would be from one rarefaction to the next 
or from one compression to the next. So let's go from a compression to the next compression and this will be your lambda. Notice that the wave is propagating in this direction. Our wave is going in this direction which is parallel to the vibrating source. So this is what we mean in a longitudinal wave. So let's get that down. Long G tudinal where your motion or your displacement is parallel to proper location. And this is the key here, that the displacement is parallel to propagation for a longitudinal wave. Remember, the particles move to and fro like this as the wave moves in a parallel direction. How sound is produced? Air particles vibrate to and fro to produce sound, at the same time producing areas of compression and rarefaction. What is transverse wave? Here, direction of vibration perpendicular to direction of wave propagation. Examples of transverse wave, water wave, radio wave, light, x-ray. These waves, transverse waves, can propagate through a vacuum. How a transverse wave is produced? You will notice that in the demonstration, the slinky is being moved up and down. As the slinky is being moved up and down, a pulse of wave is moving from left to right. So here you notice that a perpendicular movement of the slinky produces a transverse wave that is moving away from it. Notice carefully the object that is vibrating in this case, the hand is moving perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So in a transverse wave, we vibrate up and down, but the wave moves perpendicular away from the vibrating source. So displacement is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now let's sketch this on the board. Here, our vibrating source is going up and down. So this is our vibrating source. And as the vibrating source is moving up and down, our wave is moving in this direction and it creates a wave that looks like this where your motion is up or down but the wave is moving perpendicular away from the vibrating source. So in a transverse wave what we have is displacement is perpendicular to propagation and the key here is that the displacement is perpendicular to propagation and that is how we get a transverse wave so remember in your longitudinal it is parallel very good to propagation and in transverse it is perpendicular to propagation. Good. So if you remember these key things, then you'll be able to give the definition and explain what a transverse or a longitudinal wave is. Let's try an exercise. A slinky spring is given a push, a wave travels along the spring. The wave front traveled from M to N is 40 centimeters. 
If a compression takes one second to travel from point M to N, what is the frequency of the wave? Now, if we want to work out the frequency, it says a compression takes one second to travel from M to N, which means it takes one second to travel the length of four waves. So, four waves in one second, what would your frequency be? Let's have a look at the answers. If it takes one second to travel between M and N, well, we have four full waves between M and N. So that's four waves per second. So frequency, four hertz. Remember, frequency is the number of waves per second. Let's try another exercise. A two meter long rope is placed on the floor. And at one end, the rope is swung once to the left and produces a pulse. If the pulse takes five seconds to travel from one end to the other end, what is the speed of the pulse? Well, here we just want to use the old formula for speed, which is distance over time. So we know that the rope is two meters, that's our distance. The time taken is five seconds. So you can calculate your speed by just doing distance over time. Have you done it? Let's have a look at the answer. Answer, 2 over 5, which equals 0 0.4 meters per second. So, you can calculate by using D over T, but if you are given values like frequency and lambda, then you would use the formula V equals F lambda. Summary. Two types of waves, longitudinal due to vibration parallel to the path of propagation. Remember our example for longitudinal, which is a sound wave. Now, if you get a question like this in the exam, what is a longitudinal wave? Remember, your statement must say, a longitudinal wave, the direction of wave propagation is parallel to the displacement of the particles in the medium. Now, they will also say, well, what is or what are examples of longitudinal waves? Remember, our best example is the sound wave. Then they will ask you, can a longitudinal wave travel in outer space? The answer is no. A longitudinal wave must have a medium in which to travel. If it doesn't have a medium, it cannot travel. Sound needs a medium. We've already learned this in our lower secondary. It can travel in gas, liquid or solid, but it cannot travel in a vacuum. Now, the second statement, transverse wave, is due to the vibration perpendicular to the path of propagation. So, they will extend the question and say, what is a transverse wave? Direction of propagation perpendicular to displacement of particles in the medium. Does a transverse wave need a medium? Well, it depends on the wave. If it's an electromagnetic wave, such as light or X-ray, then no, it does not need a medium. But if it's a wave like a water wave, then obviously it does need a medium because water itself is liquid so it's a medium. It contains particles inside it. These particles will be moving up and down. Now, other types of questions that you will commonly face are questions like, they will draw a wave for you. Let's demonstrate this on the board, okay? So say you see a question in an examination paper. And what they've done is they've drawn a wave, like this. And in the wave here, they're drawing a piece of wood with a flag above it, like so. Let's say that we have a wave coming in this direction. Now, they will ask you what happens to this object, the wooden block with the flag on it, as the wave passes by. Now, what we have here is obviously an indication of a transverse wave. So, the object will move perpendicular, correct, perpendicular 
to the direction of propagation. They will ask you what is the displacement of the object at the end. Remember, the displacement will be zero because in the end, the object will not move because a wave only transfers energy, but it does not transfer matter. So the object won't move in the direction of the wave, just up and down until it goes back to equilibrium. And when it goes back to equilibrium, obviously its final displacement will be zero. The same also applies with a longitudinal wave. So these are the common things that they will ask you with reference to a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Also, they will ask you in terms of labeling. Now, if you're going to get a longitudinal wave and they're going to ask you to label, remember that you have rarefraction and compression. Remember with our transverse wave, the tops are called crests. So let's add that name in here. This is a crest and the bottom valley is called a trough. So remember these names because they are slightly different from one to another. In general, a crest is the same as an area of compression. So every compression area can be drawn as a crest and every rarefaction area can be drawn as a trough. Remember these key things about your waves. So we have two types of waves, longitudinal and transverse. Remember the examples of each. Remember the key definition for each. And finally, remember that the longitudinal wave needs medium and the transverse waves in general do not need a medium for propagation. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.